guys. Hope you guys are off to a great weekend. Has been uh, really, really requested. You guys have asked for it. A lot of you guys have asked on Snapchat for it. So I figured, all right, we'll do we'll do the forestry mulching scope and kind of run over the uh, the quick laundry list of questions that people ask about forestry mulching and give you guys a few quick tips on how to start, how not to make some of the mistakes I made, and give you a little bit of an update on what we what we switched our machine out to. Uh, so to do a quick overview of the machine, we uh, we started out with a 74 horsepower track unit. It was a Bobcat T630. It had a high flow pump in it. Originally it didn't have a high flow pump in it. I upgraded that pump. That cost about know, like 3000 or so, but it was it really would have been a $5,000 job. It just happened to have had a warranty breakdown and we had an opportunity to upgrade it. What up, Wes? Uh, so we had an opportunity to upgrade that T630. So I jumped into it, had the T630. The way that you can start with mulching is you can get a diamond mower deck, 60 inch, 72 inch, whatever the heck they are. They're like six and a half grand you, like 12. Get into that and that'll be enough to get you into mulching. Like you'll be able to do like 70% of what a legit mulcher can do. I'll show you real quick the machine. So this machine that we upgraded to post the T630 days is a ASV120. We de-logoed it because uh, I'm not about the logos. We are going to paint it purple because we're going to call it the Fairy Godmother. Uh, my four-year-old, almost four-year-old, is on her way over here now. She's like, yeah, let's call this the Fairy Godmother. I thought it was a sweet name, so let's do that. Uh, we're going to rhino line it purple on the arms, probably do something with the back. Um, maybe keep it black, but we're going to rhino line it up just for, uh, for forestry reasons. Up front, we've got the Dennis Seamoff head. This is a big deal. Uh, we never had a seam off before. It's like most of your, your power is going to be made via the head, or it's going to really be spent well, I should say. Uh, tractor's obviously making the power, but um, you know you want, you want that Dennis seam off. If you can get the Dennis seam off, it's like a world of difference. And then this particular unit we went with this um, is what we call a large frame T CTL. It's 120 horsepower Cummins. Um, only machine for CTL-wise that's actually made for forestry work and so uh you know it's got the roll like everything here comes standard like we wouldn't have to add a cooler we wouldn't have to add any of this um it's got obviously it's got the little cummins in it we've got what's up some some and say hi, hi. <laughs> and so um it comes with the mtl tracks uh at one point caterpillar had an mtl i don't believe they offer the mtl now 2018 i don't think they've got them out um, you can add things like a hydraulic winch to it and all that type of stuff. But what's really convenient about this machine is all of these like panels in the back just literally flip off and is really easy. And so for us, it was like an easy decision. It was like the Caterpillar was 110 horsepower. This one was 120 horsepower. Caterpillar had 140 uh, gallon minute flow. This one had um, 45 gallon minute flow and it's adjustable. So I can bring that thing all the way down to uh, 30 gallons a minute on the high flow and then what's really sweet about the forestry unit um, they make it a dirt one they make a, a 120 an asv 120 dirt option and then they make the forestry package which you get the door you get the guards you get it just comes the way it comes and uh you can't delete anything on it like i tried to reduce the price and the guy the sales guy's like it comes it comes the way it comes you can't add or delete anything i tried to delete the radio because normally i do head buds and uh he's like you just you can't it just is what it is um, so what's sweet, what I liked about it anyway, is you've got your low flow attachments right here. So these are for your augers, your grapples, stuff like that. You got your high flow attachments, and these things are just really, really beefy. A lot of high flow, a lot of flow come through them, and then obviously you can adjust it, which is pretty sweet. Um, does it take def? Yes. Everything over 100 horsepower, 2018, is going to take def fluid. Can it be deleted? Because it's a Cummins, yes, it can. So you can take this 120 horsepower all the way up to 145 horsepower with the Delete and Tune kit. Um, they s Morin Diesel up in Connecticut sells it and installs the kit. So you can delete all your exhaust, et cetera, et cetera. Everything that people do when they have the Cummins to increase your power. Obviously, you're going to jack your warranty up. This one has the worst warranty in the business. It's got one-year unlimited hour warranty. But it does have, um, does have a 1,500-hour warranty on the tracks, which is sweet. I went with the MTLs because... Like, I mean, MTLs in the woods are sweet. Those, all those bogey wheels move. There's more maintenance on MTLs, but it's, uh, it's a lot less. It's a smoother ride. It's a nicer ride. You can get out of some hairy situations a little bit better. And then, obviously, uh, we've got the Dennis Seamoff 180 head up here. All these guys are uh, 
you need to be sharpened, which is why we pulled it out. Just came back on the job. But um, that right there, I think it's 26 teeth all the way around. It's like an absolute, it just eats. The thing freaking eats. So how to get going in forestry mulching? Start out with a basic machine, CTL, ideally tracks with a good front door. You need the Lexan door. Um, this is not glass. It's like hard plastic. You can get Lexan for just about any machine. Um, if you don't have a high flow machine, it's not the end of the world. You can still start out with a deck and you can get that deck um, out there and you can start selling jobs. So you can't, you know, do what something like an XHP, which is Caterpillar's XHP, or the ASV is going to do with a Seamoth head on it, but you can get going like that. Um, best setup in the world, I think, is like a Bobcat with high flow. And, and, I mean, it's a good, it's a good, uh, for the price, it's hard to beat it. Um, so 74 horsepower Bobcat with high flow and a deck up front, you can do 70% of what you could do with like an XHP, maybe not with a Seamoth on it, but an XHP and any other head. So you can, you can get some production out of it and you can get into doing $1,000 to $1,400 a day type of work with just that setup. So $50,000, $60,000 CTL brand new, a $6,000 to $12,000 deck brand new or used or new, and you're off to the races, you got $1,000 a day type of unit. This one we charge $1,800 a day for um, on a single day, and then we charge, uh, if it's like a double day, we'll do like $1,500, and we don't really ever run it for less than $1,500. Maybe we'll do $1,200. Um, $1,200 lowest if it's like a 10-acre, 20-acre, 50-acre farm, and we, if we're able to book like a week or two weeks of work out of it, we'll do that. Obviously, it's just like a regular CTL. It's got the quick attach and all that other stuff, um, so I still do like land work services with it. Um, so I'll do like, you know, setting trees, grading out dirt, try not to do it too much, but if I can get this roughly the same amount of price or cost, price, whatever, um, if I can charge the same amount that I charge for forestry work and have an easier day where I don't have to deal with like sharpening teeth and all the stuff that might like happen, um, I'd obviously, I'll go do that. Um, but we do that in between forestry jobs. Um, the process is pretty much... You know, it's, it's a high maintenance business. It's a high breakdown business. Uh, the truck, if you guys, I don't know if you guys have seen it, previous scopes, but R1, it's at the shop now. We got every tool, welder, generator, et cetera, that we would need on that truck, air compressor. So it's kind of necessary to have that when you're out in the woods. But I wanted to do a quick scope on it. How you guys get started is you literally start selling customers, work with a guy that you can outsource your forestry work to, slash, go out, and rent a machine. Next step is get into, if you're still testing the waters, get into doing land work services, get into doing bobcat services, get a deck, get a, a windshield upgrade. And then once you get going, you've got your customer list established. I've almost at two years in this business, upgrade yourself into something like the Godmother, um, the XHP or whatnot. On the CTL level, I will leave you with this. Typically, you don't see the way the business model works best is that you buy the head, and the head is $40,000 head, roughly. It's like, I think this one was like 30, it was north of 35 and less than 39. It's somewhere like 38 or something like that. Uh, but you start out with the head. If you can buy the head outright, you do that. Most of the time you can do 0% zero down on a tractor. Always negotiate the cash price first, but you'll find out cash price, finance prices are pretty darn close. Ends up being like a $1,500 and $1,800 a month game. So... You run the tractor for two years, which ideally you're inside a warranty, unless it's an ASV, you got one year, you're not inside a warranty. You're always in a payment. You treat it like a lease. So you go out there and bill 1500 to 1800 a day. You're, you're paying 1800 a month for the machine. And every two years, you're even on the machine or have a little bit of equity. And you get rid of that machine because at 2,000 hours, these machines start to shit the bed. So they just hydro pumps, sensors, et cetera, et cetera. There are guys who have 3,000, 4,000 hour mulchers, and if they're running fine, keep them. But at any point in time, when you start going through your breakdowns, the breakdowns aren't really worth it. So my mistake at the beginning when I started forestry mulching, bought my, not my Bobcat, but I upgraded to a Caterpillar 299. I'd pay like double payments on it. I was trying to pay that thing off. My buddy Rickard, Richie was like, uh, yeah, don't, don't even try to pay these off. These are like... You, you buy the heads because they last for a while. You can always rebuild the head for like th seven grand. Um, and then you'll get like several thousand hours out of a head. And then you can, you can upgrade it or rebuild it rather. Um, but with the tractors, these are throwaways. Like they're not, even though it's like a $100,000 tractor, it's, it's a piece of crap, especially after 2,000 hours. 
We went with the forestry one because it was as guarded and as built for it as possible. Um, we didn't have too much luck with the local cat dealer getting our stuff in and out of there, so we were like, eh, we're not going to really try to roll back. But there's nothing wrong with the XHP. It's a, good, it's a nice, nice machine. Um, it's, it's, the cab is sweet on XHP, too. This is just like a typical Dodge. It's got the Cummins, but it's also got that, like, it doesn't have that Cadillac interior that a Caterpillar does. Um, but on the larger scale, so the next step up, so you start out with, like, that 74-horsepower tractor and a deck, you move on up into the Seamoth with a large frame, something with 110 horsepower or more behind that Seamoth. The next step up is a paid off game. And that is like quarter of a million dollar unit or higher. And there's like a, I think real popular unit right now is a Super Track 270, or SK170. It's built by Super Tracks. It's wheel loader. It's a Caterpillar wheel loader. They say you'll get 5,000 hours out of it minimum. Uh, and it's something that, uh, that you can rebuild relatively easy, it's worth it to rebuild because it's like a truck. You know, like you can you can buy it for a quarter of a million dollars, you can run it for five thousand to maybe ten thousand hours, and then you can rebuild that thing for I don't know, fifty grand or less and run it again. With a CTL, there you run them for two years, you owe sixty, it's worth sixty, you get out of it. And then you get into another one. And you just CTLs, you always need them because they're super convenient, they're easy to transport, you can move them around with F two fifty, like they're nice and easy to do they can do like this one can do an acre two acres a day uh, but uh, once you get up into the dedicateds that's where you can own the machine have the machine paid off have no payment and just be printing plus you're doing three times four times of production so the real goal in forestry mulching is to get up into the dedicated if you have the client list for it at this point I still have a lot of Bobcat service customers and then I've got a decent amount of forestry customers so it works out good for my business model one-man band to run CTL and I'll probably always have a CTL in the fleet, but at some point, hopefully, I'll have like a Barco or something with larger contracts. Like these are called right-of-way contracts, stuff like railroads, uh, highways. You're clearing for like big sites, like malls and stuff like that. You're, you know, you're going in there and clearing for other big land land clearer guys that don't do mulching. So hope that that's uh, useful for you. I do co do coaching, the landworks coaching, mulching coaching with several guys. I'm looking to add two more guys for the month of April. So hit me up, onsite Trav. You can find me, Trav, at onsitetrav.com. Hit me in an email if it's something that you're looking to, to get into. I like coaching with my guys. I learn a lot from them. It's a little exhausting, so I don't want to take more than two guys. So if it's something that you're like, yes, I'm very interested in, I already have a Bobcat, I would say that that would be a prerequisite is that you've already have an established lawn or landscape business and you probably have moved up into that bobcat level and you're right at that spot where you've been looking at forestry mulching or land clearing site services and you're either one have a machine you're upgrading to have a machine or you're pretty much ready to pull the trigger and do it that would be when it would be worthwhile to get someone that could coach you out i had a coach when i got in this and uh, it was super it was really really helpful still made mistakes but it was really really super helpful. So until next time, hope you guys have a good one. See ya. Stop your eyes and say bye.